Orca's new flight stack is finally ready to release after waiting for so long. That's right, the first post announcing this was all the way back in the beginning of 2022. Wow, the world was a different place back then. Uh, it's been 84 years. And it's a much different landscape in FPV, but this is still a super exciting release. And we're gonna go over all of the features that this thing has and then we'll decide is this too little too late or is this just what the doctor ordered in order to be able to give you the ability to fly without having to mount a receiver on board and use hd probably the most significant thing about this flight stack is that much like the ghost hybrid duo board that was so popular with all racers this has ghost dual receiver configured onto each board for the hd version now for the analog version you still use the ghost hybrid duo board but it has plugs for that board to go directly in and it also has plugs for your camera so that you can get everything set up with zero soldering but i'm more focused on the hd boards because part of what happened in the last few years since this was announced to its ultimate release was that people were waiting for a solution where we could finally get rid of our receivers you see we had all become super spoiled by that ghost hybrid duo board why because it allowed us to have receiver and video transmitter in one layer and not have to mount a receiver anywhere and it, you could just control ghost on the back of the module you could change your channel like this and it was beautiful you know when i did that minchan video in costa rica i was already starting to experiment with express lrs but that meant that i had to change my channel using the osd menu like a caveman and because we were all live streaming that race everyone was watching me change my channel manually with my video system on and making a tremendous amount of fun of me that trip I got to hang out with Tony and Vlaco, and I saw that all the top racers were flying Ghost. The following year, International Open, all the top five were wearing Orca goggles and using Ghost modules with Rapid Fire. Then, DRL got the Orca goggle contract, but somewhere along the way, all the racers started switching to HD zero. And since you could no longer use the hybrid dual board for video, that was no longer a thing and so people slowly started migrating over to express lrs now express lrs you could get it for a fraction of the cost and it started getting better and better and i waited guys i waited for this ghost board before i doubled down and started building more express lrs receivers i even bought the solo receivers for ghosts just because i didn't want to have to switch i bought a bunch of them and started putting them in my hd zero quads as i started converting my fleet over to hd i waited i waited and it never came and you know what? All of my five inch quads now are on Express LRS. But it's still a huge pain on where do you stick the receiver inside one of these open racer builds. I end up always having to put it in the back, like on top of the capacitor right here, under the battery leads and just double-sided tape and hope that it doesn't fly off and fly loose in the middle of my race. And so having a flight controller with ghost built in means that that problem will be gone. It has an HD plug at the black so that you can plug in your DJI 03 or your HD zero system. Keep in mind though, that those have different pinouts. So you may have to repin your plug depending on which system that you use. Now this thing uses an F722 processor with an MPU 6000 gyro. So it's all the stuff that you want. It comes with a variety of stack hardware, gummies, harnesses. It's a nice Bex on board, five volt at two amp or 10 volt at two amp. It has 16 megabytes of black box storage on there and a USB-C connector, which I do like to see as I'm starting to convert everything in my house to USB-C. It's nice to see FPV follow suit as well. Now, because I'm receiving this product so close to the release date, I'm probably gonna barely get a few packs on it. And I think it's disingenuous for me to fly it for three to 10 packs and say that it's the best thing ever. So I'm just gonna give you an overview of all the features, what I think, and I'm going to rely on the community, you guys, to put in the comments what you think about the reliability. If you've had any good or negative experiences over time, I'll try to keep that updated. And then what I'm going to do is after six months or so, I'm going to do a component roundup 
We'll have multiple new stacks and other products that have all come out during that period. And I'll cover the longevity and durability of all those, including this one. Well, I was supposed to finish this build and go out and fly the new Orca stack, but unfortunately a hurricane's about to hit Texas. So I'm just gonna have to stay home and play simulator instead. Now at first glance, the only thing that I don't love about this stack is that it does have the good size FETs on the front. It's got eight of them, but on the underside, it's got the tiny size FETs and you usually find these in smaller type boards. I don't know if that necessarily means anything good or bad. It's rated very highly, so it should be able to handle everything fine. I do like that they have solder pads on both the top and bottom of the ESC. That's quite nice. One of the things though, that you can tell this is their first iteration. Look how long this stack cable is. It's like three times longer than it needs to be. The Fox here one is only about a third of that because they're not trying to compensate for anything. Uh, but that's really like a minor, minor gripe. They'll learn that at time. You know, we don't expect them to get every consideration right, right from the get go. I for one am super happy now that I can now have a build that's three layers tall with no receiver anywhere. And I get diversity receivers. If you ever have your Express LRS antenna in a bad placement, or if you're using that little ceramic tower thing, you can get those telemetry warnings quite often. You know what I never, almost never got when I was flying Ghost hybrid duels? That warning, why? Because it just has, to me, it just performed better. And the fact that I had two antennas, so I could have one at the front of my quad, one at the back, out on the arms, and you would always have signal strength. It doesn't matter if you're going at 250, 500 Hertz, if you're dropping packets because of poor signal strength. So I think the dual system is the way to go. I've never wanted to run a dual like Radio Master receiver because they're just so large. It doesn't really work for a racing build. Now you can do it. I also want to note that even though Orca has shifted some of its main priorities away from the consumer side, they are still one of the biggest companies that supports every race local to the big ones. I've been at so many events that were sponsored by Orca. They're helping out bringing prizes, helping out providing gates and flags. And they're the type of company that supports this community. So hopefully we can still extend that support to them, provided that it's a pretty good product. What do you think in the comments, guys? Is it too little too late? Orca, thank you for sticking with this product, with this process. You know what, it might be a little bit late, but you did what you said. And I can appreciate that among all the FPV companies out there because not all of them do. Thanks guys.